Hello everybody, this is Richard Cespedes and I'm here with a video to talk about uh, kind of a, a loopholes and contradictions in the spiritual realm and that they have not even been, um, I'm pretty sure no one's ever connected these two dots together like when you die you see your life review and um, when you see your life review you see all of the things that you've done in the living form of your previous life that you just left recently when you cause conflict or when you cause pain to others inflict pain you and you feel the pain that you inflicted on that individual you feel his pain or her pain on anything that you've done to them like if you punch them or you beat them up to a pulp there's a loophole that i thought of what would happen if you were a mobster and and if you wanted uh, someone owed you money for some drugs and uh, instead of you you personally going out there and causing uh, inflicting harm on this person that owes you money to teach them a lesson going out there with a the crowbar and hanging their legs and their head or whatever you hire goons or thugs to do it for you you know if they go out there and they if they do this deed that you want that uh that, that you command them to do you pay them to do that's the thing is that they're going to witness when they pass away, when they get old or get an accent or whatever, the goons are going to witness in their review, when they pass away, their life review, the pain that they inflict on that person. But you will not as the mobster, as the big mob boss. So, you're, because, because from what I understand is that when you pass away in your life, you view your life review, you only see things through your eyes and what you have done. As a first person view, like in a video game, you see everything from what you do, not from another person, not from a third person or second person point of view, like in video games or in different camera views and movies. You only see things that you have done and that you felt and thought of. You know, so that's a loophole there in the spiritual realm. Is that if you're a big mob boss and if you and if you um and if you want to get your money back or teach a guy a lesson. You hire goons to go out there and they do your dirty work. You know, you pay them to do something that you don't want to do physically and in person. So right there, boom, that's a loophole. In terms of in terms of the life review uh, thing, when when that mob boss passes away, he's not going to see what his goons did to to that victim, whether they killed him or they just uh, a brutally severe hurt him. You know, they are the uh, they're going to see what they see, and the mob boss is not going to see any of it when he passes away. So that's a loophole, you know. I'm not saying uh, that, that uh, I'm not saying to do what the mob boss does, but in a way, it's a loophole. If you want to cause harm to someone, the concept or the technique that you want to do is to not do it physically in person, but whether hire other people to do it for you, so that you will not be affected. You will not be affected when you pass away. Uh, pass away. You will not see uh, um, the pain that that person went through because you hired someone else to do it for you. And one other way to make sure that you do not see, um, you know, um, um, this pain that you caused for another individual that you had nothing to do with, you think someone else would do, is to not imagine it. Do not describe it. The mob boss, in order for you to not to get away with it is to not think about visually too hard how you want the person to get hurt when you hire the goons to do it. Don't describe to them how you want the goon, how, how you want the person that owes you money to be hurt. Don't describe how you want it to be done. Just tell them you want them to hurt them and to beat them up and take the money. So in a way as long as you are not physically causing harm in, to another individual, you're not going to be affected in your life review. Is not going to show up, so that's a loop. It's a loophole there. You can get away with hurting others as long as you're not the one that's actually doing it. You can hire others to do it for you, so you can get away with it. And and, and it's it's kind of negative. It's not really a positive thing, but that's a loophole in the spirituality thing. And and also don't think about it. If you're gonna cause harm to someone, just don't think about visually how you want it to be done. Don't be don't don't let your anger get the best of you, and don't describe to the, the thugs how you want it to be done. So you just completely just say you completely get rid of all the imagination in your head. You completely detach yourself, not only physically but mentally and emotionally and imaginatively. You just tell them there's this guy named John. Go to his house and teach him a lesson. Take the money. 
and that's it. And they come back and they give it to you. Don't you know the the the, the but the the, the 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 thugs come and they say, oh 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 this is what we did to him. Just say no. Just don't 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 say nothing. Just give him the money. As long as he learns his lesson, don't describe how you did it. And that's a loophole in the life review when you pass away. So you can get away with causing harm to others. But maybe maybe I'm some, maybe I'm missing something. Maybe um. Maybe um, you will witness the pain that the person went through. Maybe, maybe the spirits will find a way to kind of squeeze that in there, even though um, there was nothing going on. I, I, I don't know, but I think that's a real good loophole that you can get away with. And one also thing I want to talk about has to do with uh, time travel and, and, and cloning. Um, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a defiance actually of the spiritual realm. And the thing is, though, is that let's say for example, um, you have someone that died this year in 2016. And maybe like in uh, like in July or June, and then it just so happened that all of a sudden um, this company invents a time machine that can go forward and backwards in time, and they invented it in October of this year. So it's only a few months after your friend passes away that they invent the time machine. So you pay some money, which obviously is going to be the case. You pay some money to go back in time, and they give you a time limit, 30 minutes for ten thousand dollars or whatever. You go back in time, and you take your friend before he got into that car or went on a road trip and got an accident killed or took some drugs or whatever you grab him from that situation before the minutes before he dies you take him in a time machine and you bring him back into October of the same year just a little bit further above from July or June when they died and, and, and they're there now so the thing is is that that's a defiance of, of the natural order of his death and that's also gonna be mind-blowing because your friend that's a, now a spirit is going to be seeing himself alive again <laughs> right there in October so uh, the flow of it still kind of continues you know like um, you remove your friend from the past and you bring him there and then your spirit but your but your dead but that same dead version of that friend is floating around looking and he, and he sees himself there beside you, and and he's and and, and, and he's kind of like you know the spirit's gonna be like what the hell's going on, here? you know because that that's the thing is that is that uh, that's a defiance of the spiritual realm is that like that's probably something that they never thought of that that doing these things and bringing back a person back to life is a defiance of the natural order of the flow of death life and death and and and, and enlightenment and all this stuff because. Now you have two versions of them. One spiritually dead ghost version, and then now you have, and then, and then you have the living, breathing, uh, body of him too. So you have two versions now. One dead ghost and one alive. So like, how can that be? You know, um, that's also a defiance of the natural order, of the spiritual realm. Because it, and 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 also, you know, how does that affect uh, the afterlife? How, what, how, how does that affect the universe? How does that affect everything? And, you know, one other thing I uh, want to add too is that, uh, is that let's say that that same friend dies of drugs like in November. So then the spirit realm has two versions of the same person. Two versions of the same individual, two same spirits floating around in the afterlife. So like how can, you know, um, that's also a defiance and a loophole and it, and and uh, it goes against the grain of the, of the spirituality and the, and the and the afterlife because you know there can only one there can only be one version of you at a time you know one version of you that exists because you have to learn you have to learn you know like the, the original incarnate of your friend needed to be there to learn and then die and go to heaven and all that stuff so it's like a defiance of that it, it, it's, it's, that's one thing is that, that that's a loophole that. Uh, science is basically, without even thinking about it, without even being spiritual, they're, they're thinking of ideas that are defying the flow and natural order of the afterlife. Without even thinking about it, we're doing it. And that, and one, one other, other thing is that a cloning. Let's say that your friend dies again and they invent a cloning machine or they perfect cloning the technique to where they can get the DNA and they can in, put, in, inject that back into your mother or, or a host with an egg bring your friend back to life or they have a machine that speeds up the process of the aging of the person so they could be back to 30 years old or 32 or whatever so that's like a uh, and then the person is born again 
as his clone, but the original version of him is a spirit. So how can that, you know, what's going on there? You know, that that just that will even blow the mind of even the spirits too. And so, um, in conclusion, um, I think that our world that we live in, we're living in the world where we have power to create and do whatever the hell we want to do. And that there is no real laws or limitations or boundaries in the afterlife. You know, maybe mediums will say, oh, well, you know, the dead leave and then they go, and we have to, you know, see their spiritual caseworker and we have to, you know, think and learn and, be, and you know, it's like a slow process, you know, it's, it's probably fantastic up there, but it's like there is no real boundaries and rules. Like the way that I see the spiritual realm is like a naturalistic thing, like flowing water. You can, you can, you can take control, the living can take control of the universe because likewise we're gods. You know, whether you're alive or dead, you're a god. So the spiritual realm is like flowing water. You can let nature um, create its own lake and create its own path and flow, or you can be a god and create, um, divert the, the flow of water into a pond, or you could, you could um, stop the flow of water at its source. You can, uh, you can um, create different paths for the water to go down. Or, 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 or anything you want. You can do anything you want with that flow of water. And the flow of water is a metaphor for the living in the world and the universe. We have control over what we can do. And that, and that there really is no laws or boundaries. And that we can do whatever we want. Anything that we want that we please, whether it's a negative or positive, you know. And those are the ideas that I had about um, the contradictions and loopholes in the spiritual realm and the living. And uh, why don't you guys think about that and tell me what you guys think. It's Ricky Cespedes thinks. So.